All right, so now we are on part two of module one. So to continue, let's talk about the common types of networks. Remember, I'm going to ask you to take notes, right? And submit them as homework. So there are four types of networks. There are the small home, small office, home office. You can have a medium, large, something like on campus. Or the internet, a worldwide connecting network connect to each other. All right, so let's talk about LANs and WANs. A local area network is where all the devices are connected to each other and you can, and you know, you own the devices with the wiring. If you need to communicate with, this is what a local area network is. Uh, it could be um, a canvas, a building. Um, but when you need to communicate with another branch somewhere else and you need to pay a service provider to allow you to connect to that other LAN, then you are going through a WAN, wide area network. So <clears throat> what is a, a LAN? A LAN is when all the devices are connected through either a switch or an access point in a building on a canvas where the um the organization own all of these devices and the media that connects all of these devices in a private um network when the private network or the LAN, the local area network needs to connect to another device in a different LAN that is far away and it's um not feasible to physically connect these devices together because they are in different geographic area and you need to connect through the internet, the cloud, to get to that other device, then you are connecting through a WAN. So a wide area network is the connection of one LAN with another that are located in different geographic areas. All right, so uh, please write these definitions. A LAN is a network infrastructure that spans a small geographic area like a building but a WAN is the one that spans a wide geographic area when you're connecting lands together and who connects lands together routers who connects the devices the end devices in a LAN? the switch all right so just write the definition of these so you'll know also i want you to write down that the switch is the device that connects the end devices together in a LAN, and the router is the device that connects the LANs together, the LANs that are in different geographic areas. All right, the internet can be considered as multiple LANs that connects to each other, and these are public, um, publicly local area networks. It could be yahoo.com, eBay, whoever wants to connect. This is the cloud. This is really, could be layer three switches or routers that connect, you know, when you was, you would. So what you would do, for example, if you are at home, you send your data to an ISP, the ISP will then throw you on the LAN and the LAN will find a path to wherever you need to go to. All right. The, the internetworking or short for internet is the one you know, this is unregulated. So as data travels on the cloud, on the internet, no one is watching it. It's not regulated. So anything can happen. There's a lot of bad stuff, of course. People are eavesdropping, watching your data. There's a lot of viruses and a whole bunch of other stuff. That's one of the reasons we have to protect ourselves with firewalls, IPSs, anti-malware software, and so on, to make sure we control what data goes in and out of our network. All right, and who regulates these? What the data? What the data that's being transmitted? How far can you be transmitted? Even though they're not watching the data, we got the Internet Engineering Task Force, the ICANN, and the IAP are the ones that assign the addresses to allow us to communicate, for example, without any problems. Um, there are three different terms that you should be familiar with, and please write these down. If the intranet is a private LAN, the extranet is a network you could be considered as private, but it's uh, you're allowing 
for example, your customers to connect to your LAN or suppliers or collaborators. So that's the extra net. A private WAN, you can think of it. And the internet is where it is for the public. Everybody connects to. All right. The internet, working connect, uh, the internet access connection. How do you connect to the internet? So this is the World Wide Web. You connect to either through DSL, cable, or many other, um, different, you know, cellular satellites or dial-up, depending on what type of connection you get on the internet. So, like I said to you, you need a service provider that either offer you DSL or cable connection or cellular or wireless connection to connect to the internet. So you send it to the internet service provider, your data, and then your data is placed onto the internet network. So what you pay, you, pay, you know, for your speed, for your bandwidth is the connection that from you, from your home to your ISP. This is called the um, local loop or the last mile. So if you're paying for 200 megabits per second, that's what you pay for. The connection between you and your service provider. And then your service provider is the one that places you on the internet. And when they're getting data back, it goes through your service provider. He's the one that offers you the IP address to allow you to connect to the outside world. To get on the internet, once you're on the internet, you know, you travel. Nobody controls where you're going. So, you know, you could be blocked. A whole bunch of other stuff could happen to you. So you got to protect yourself once you're on the internet. The service provider, he may give you some firewalls and check out spams and make sure you don't get a lot of garbage into your network, but there's only so much they can do, all right? Their, their main job is to get you onto the internet and connect whoever you need to connect to. So you may connect through cable, DSL, cellular, satellite, or an old dial-up. All right, um, if you are a business, you know, you know, having a DSL may not be good enough or reliable and this bandwidth may not be there. So you might want a dedicated line, directly connected line that no one else uses. You may use an ethernet WAN, which gives you up to gigabit connection. You may still want DSL if you have nothing else. Or you may use satellite if you are far away and and they're, you know, you're out of the city area somewhere. Could be a unique connection. You may use the satellite. Convergent networks. Convergent networks, in the old days, we, we used to have we used to have a service for every type of uh, connection that we wanted. For example, if you wanted telephone, you would call the telephone company to give you a line. If you wanted data, then you would call a different service provider. If you want video, you call the ser different service provider. So when we put all of these different connections together, that's called we're converging the data. We're taking data voice and video connecting on the same network so they are all going to be packaged the same way the only difference is going each one will have a different label indicating what type of data it's inside so we're all traveling together on the same wire but with different um, labels on us to identify who we are so that's a converged network we no longer need a separate Lie for each of those services. All right. So please write this down. A converged network can deliver data, voice, and video over the same network infrastructure. Write that down. All right. We'll go over the packet tracer in the classroom. We don't have to worry about that for now. All right. Now, how do you make sure that your network is reliable? That means one of the most important jobs that you will need is to make sure that your network is always up and running 24 seven. So you have to set up, write this down, to make the network reliability or the network architecture, uh, the reliability of your network. So number one, you need to make sure that you have fault tolerances. Fault tolerances means that you need to have some backups just in case something goes wrong and automated backups, which we'll be able to learn down the road on how to set that up in case a link or a cable breaks or uh, a switch goes down, your default gateway, even a service provider 
as a backup, you need to have that. Scalability. Scalability means you want to be e you want to expand your network easily. You don't want to go through a hole and rip off the whole design of your land because you need to add another, you know, 100 users or so. So you should be able to expand your network without any problems. That's scalability. Security. Make sure that all of your devices are well secured and your network. So when you expand, you don't compromise anyone else. And quality of service. You need to make sure you know which... Um, which services on your network uh, are more important than others, for example, or should, cannot tolerate delay. So you should be able to separate switches, routers, should be able to know the type of data that's being transmitted. Is it a voice? Is it data? Is it video? And which is, has more uh, importance than others to be able to, 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 uh, to traverse the network? So that's quality of service, being able to control what type of data that's being transmitted. All right, so write these down. Four tolerances, scalability, and quality of service. And network security, of course. you got to make sure your network is secure. So we'll spend plenty of time on all of these four different topics throughout the semester. All right. The network trends that are... Today. More and more um, organizations will require their um, their users to bring in their own devices instead of all. You know, you may bring your laptop, you may bring your phones, you may bring your tablets, and they'll set up software on your tablet or your phone or any device that you bring in to allow you to connect to their network. And that's of course going to bring a big headache for the system administrator because they want to make sure that security is the number one. So all of these devices have to meet certain criteria before you allow them to connect to your network. So that's what bringing your own device means. Unlike collaborations, video communications nowadays, cloud computing, which we'll also discuss in details as we move along. All right, so online communications being, you know, if you have an online classrooms or anything like that, uh, video communications, you no longer have to travel across the country to be able to meet. You could do that um, in your office settings. You can use the Cisco WebEx, and there's plenty of other video um, communication protocols that are out there. Cloud computing is instead of really saving your data locally or, uh, or installing software locally on your machines, you get that right off of um, the cloud, the internet. It's much cheaper and um, more secure, and you don't even have to do worry about maintenance and controlling it. So through Microsoft Azure or Amazon Web Services, you'll be able to do that. Again, we'll discuss that in details as we move along. Uh, there are different types of clouds, but we'll again, we'll talk about that uh, when we get to when we get to that. Well. When we get to the cloud computing part of the lecture, all right. Um, power line networking. If, for example, you uh, you may use the wiring uh, for your electricity wiring in your home to pass data to each other to pass data without having to run the wires. Uh, but that's only if they are on the same circuit board. Um, not a lot of people do it, so I don't know. Sometimes, for example, if your wireless router is in a place and you can't reach it, so you may use the power line, a quick way of getting there. Uh, wireless broadband. And when you have a wireless network at home, you may use DSL. Uh, network security. Network security is extremely important. You want to make sure that you have your firewall well set up to connect to your network whenever you need to. All right? We'll talk about security and um, what else? Security solutions. We'll be able to set IPS systems, VPS systems, everything that you need to connect to a network. All right, so this is it, really. We'll talk about the professional you know, becoming an, a CCNA professional when we, um, so you should definitely, we are really at the CCNA level. That's what we're going to be working on for the next three. Chapter uh, for the next three sections.
All right, so save your networks and I'll see you then.